Hello again nutrition nerds and welcome back to another video. This is the last of a three part series that I did with Andrew from Ironman Hacks. I did two previous interviews with Andrew about hydration and low carb high fat diets for triathletes and I've put a link to them in the video description for this one in case you're interested in watching them. So again, this will be a bit of a different video to normal because I'll just let the interview play in full. This video is about different types of carbohydrates for racing and how they can be important for you as triathletes when it comes to performance. We talk through the differences and how you can fine tune your nutrition to race as well as possible. Before I play it, if you haven't already, then do go check out Ironman Hacks on YouTube. You'll find lots of great content there, including some interviews with triathlon greats and current pros, and plenty of other awesome topics. So go and check it out. So let's get stuck in with this interview. Just like the previous videos, if you've got any questions or thoughts, then do let me know in the comments. Thanks, James. Well, as a trained you know, nutrition expert and triathlete yourself, yourself, I'm sure you've thought about the different types of carbs for fueling while racing. Um, and I mean, what is a carb? Is, is it is it just a sugar? Yeah, uh, essentially. I mean, carbohydrate means um, carbon with water. And the basic form of uh, a carbohydrate is a simple sugar. Um, so it's glucose is the main one which we hear lots about. Um, and the other one is fructose. And there's there's a few others, but as triathletes and and people who are sporty, that's that's what we care about. It's glucose and fructose. These are our our main forms, and that's what our body runs off. Essentially, it's the kind of basic energy um, that our lots of our cells use to help fuel them. Um, and is is sucrose part of each of those? So sucrose is a, a combination. Actually, sucrose is a combination of glucose and fructose. Um, and when you when they're combined, which is essentially table uh, sugar, table sugar, um, that that's sucrose, which is glucose and fructose combined. Right. So what's the difference between glucose and fructose in terms of where we find them and what they're used for and why why we should care? So you, you find them in different amounts in very in different foods. So things like pasta, bread that type of thing, that's glucose, or it, it's starch in vegetables, which we break down to glucose and store it as glycogen. Um, fructose you'll find in other foods, you, you'll often find combinations. Fructose might be more um, prominent in different fruits, for example. Um, now, when it comes to what our body does with it, they have different processes. They, they kind of fuel different parts of the body. Um, both of them can help to in improve our glycogen stores, which is what we, we kind of care about as triathletes because we, we want to store carbohydrates in our body. Um, fructose has more of a role in re replenishing liver glycogen. If you've ever heard of the store of uh, glycogen in our liver, fructose can contribute to that more than glucose does, um, which is why you want to have this kind of balanced diet because you're coming at it from both angles. But the reason we kind of want to know about it a little bit as triathletes and focus on it is because when it comes to racing supplements there's different ones which will contain different amounts of glucose and fructose and this will be one of those things which actually a lot of people won't have even thought of or looked at um, but the more data and science we get the more we can see that actually the different combinations of these two glucose and fructose that we have might actually have quite a big influence on how we can race so I, I think it's one of those things which is is good for triathletes to know and helps them to fine-tune their own nutrition plans right so um how would you what what would you say we should look for and what would you say you know how, how would someone make go about making that decision and and doing that fine-tuning so if we, as a, a kind of starting point, if we say that in general for racing or hard exercise, if we're going over about 90 minutes, um, we want somewhere between 40 to 80 grams of carbohydrates per hour. And that's, that's a kind of starting point and why we want to know that. Now, if you look at sport nutrition supplements and, for example, um, carbohydrate supplements when we race, so there's 
science in sport, there's talk, there's noon, there's lots of different ones who provide carb supplements. If you look on the ingredients list, some of them will just say glucose. Some of them will say glucose and fructose. Now, it becomes more important when we look at how much of these we can absorb. In terms of glucose only, we can absorb somewhere about uh, around 60 grams per hour. So for some people might not be able to absorb that much. Some people can absorb more. But if you think 50 to 60 grams of glucose per hour, but people are using a carbohydrate supplement that actually pushes them into like the 80 or 90 grams of carbohydrates per hour, they're probably not going to be able to absorb that, which means that they're going to be more likely to end up with things like tummy upset, so diarrhea, cramps, that kind of thing. So it's actually about trying to fine tune that. Now, fructose, which I mentioned is the, the other sugar, when it's absorbed by the tummy, it, it's absorbed by a different, what we call transporter. So think of it like a, there's, there's two different gateways. One will let you absorb glucose and one will let you absorb fructose. You maximize the glucose one, which means you've still got the fructose one open. And by absorbing both of them at the same time, it means you get more carbohydrates into your system, which means you've got more available to, for, for fueling your race. And that's where it kind of becomes more important. And you'll see a lot of brands now are starting to combine them. Um, and, and that's one of the things that Martin push it. And Science and Sport have just come out with their new, new beta fuel gel, um, which again, does this glucose and fructose combination. Um, you might actually see it as maltodextrin, which is essentially another form of, of glucose. And they're, they're doing both of them together to try and increase the amount you can absorb and essentially improve how well you can fuel yourself and race. So let me get this straight. You can have glucose or fructose as a fuel, as a type of carb, as a type of sugar. And each one has its, it's like, a, like, a, like a pipe or a hose. And if you can activate both at once, you can get even more fuel at the same time, as opposed to relying on one. Yeah, because there's a there's a maximum amount. It, you know, it's at 100 percent capacity. So if you try and go over that, all you're doing is just having stuff sitting in your gut. Right. It's not being absorbed. Right. But then that's sort of assuming that having more or that absorbing more is a good thing. Is, yeah. is absorbing more a good thing? Yes, in, in, in kind of in short, um, especially if you're trying to race kind of as well as possible, more is good because um, I know we, we, we've talked about this before, but in uh, terms of carbohydrate stores in our body's carbohydrate stores, which is glycogen, you've only got an, a certain amount. If you run out of that, you bonk. So the idea right. is to take in fuel in the form of carbohydrate supplements and then you use that. So you're using that because you've added it into your body. It goes into your bloodstream and your muscle cells use that rather than using their own stores, which means you're, you're using that outside source to fuel your muscles and you don't bonk. That, that's the kind of premise of it. Right. So there's sort of a parallel. It's sort of like a comparison between, you know, the two, two sources of fuel could be um, glucose and fructose, but then another two, two um, channels of fuel could be could be glycogen and fat, right? Like we talked about earlier about the LCHF debate, um, meaning those are two those are two channels or methods of metabolizing fuel. Um, but you're talking about how to activate both these sugar types, both these carb types simultaneously, as opposed to relying on one, or as opposed to taking in too much of one that you can't take on, and then having it sit in your stomach, and then we all know what happens. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. Now, okay, so is the reason that we should be taking in as much as we can simply because we can burn or we, we, we require more calories than we can, you know, we're, we're exerting more caloric expenditure than we can take on generally? Is that the yeah. reason? Yeah, so we, we will always use far more calories when we race than we can consume. Um, okay. So even if you get to... The, the kind of general generally considered max of 80 or 90 grams of carbohydrates per hour, you have four grams of carb uh, four calories per gram of carbohydrates. So that puts you at uh, 320, 
that's my maths is wrong, um, 320 calories per hour. And you're, you're going to be using far more than that when you race. Yeah. So, so yeah. You, you can never play, you, you can never equal it. Um, you can so never ca catch up to that. No, so it's right. about trying to prolong it. So as many of these channels, as many of these alternate fuel sources that we can activate at once is best, right? Glucose is one, fructose is another. Yeah, uh, definitely those two. I mean, so and this is one of those things which is worth saying, it, although we're talking about carbs, um, when you take in fat as a fuel source during a race, it does nothing. So when, when, for example, we're doing a, a race where we're trying to go as fast as you can, you'll see some supplements out there which are looking to kind of target fats or, or people will have like really, uh, they'll have cheese sandwiches or something like that. The fat that you take in there does nothing except increase the likelihood that you get tummy upset. It doesn't contribute to your performance in the slightest. So this is why... When I saw gels, I saw this brand of gel. It's not even gel. It's just peanut butter. Yeah. I it, it it sounds good. I love peanut butter. But then I thought, hold on, that's pretty fatty. Is that really a good idea? No. No. In truth, and I love peanut butter. And if if I could race on it, I would. I mean, it'd probably be pretty claggy. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, and and so I know we mentioned this before as well. But you've got about sixty to seventy thousand calories worth of fat stored in our cells. Uh, of energy work so you don't need any more um, and the process to absorb fat is a lot harder than carbohydrates carbohydrates will just get absorbed fat has to be broken down you've got to add uh, bring in other parts of your digestive system and absorb it in a different way and it's a lo much longer process um, so yeah it's we, we don't want that when we race but but now you're talking about the body fat which can can be absorbed if you're if you're like an lchf like low carb high fat kind of guy right uh how, how do you mean that sorry i'm saying you you were first we were talking you were talking about cheese and peanut butter like you don't eat that during an iron man you don't eat a block of cheese during an iron man as fuel you're saying the fat in there is not absorbable is that correct yeah i mean it, it might be absorbable you know, over hours and hours but it's not going right. to contribute to energy that your cells are using during the race but isn't your body fat like endogenous on board fat absorbable if you're fat adapted it, we use it definitely um and, and that's what i mean in that we've got so much stores there already that we don't need to to bring in extra um but that's what we were talking about oh. before where um you can you certainly can use fat but the harder you work and the harder you're faster you're trying to race the less fat you'll use, which is why the focus for racing should be on carbohydrates rather than anything else. No matter what, unequivocally. All right, so we got a video up here. We can link to it right up there, somewhere up there, about the LCHF debate and why or why not it should be right or not right for you. Okay, so what products out there, you mentioned, you mentioned a few of them that have a good combination of glucose and fructose. How can we tell, like, how will we know? Like if I'm looking at a label, how am I going to know if this one is one that, you know, activates those dual, you know, yeah. food, uh, you know, fuel channels for me? Yeah, it's a good question. So firstly, one to look for is the, the marketing um, around it. So they, it, it's becoming much bigger now. So Martin do it um, and they, they will write on it about the combination. Um, and the same with, um, science and sport with the beta fuel gel. Um, it will say on it fructose and maltodextrin, and they will often put up a ratio. Um, and the kind of gold standard ratio at the moment is 0 0.8 fructose and one of uh, maltodextrin or glucose. And that's that ratio that you're talking about. Um, and if you look in the ingredients list, they will say it, will, it should very clearly say fructose. And then it will either say glucose or maltodextrin. And that's how you, you, you know, because it will be in the ingredients list. Um, and so it, it's one of those things you can have a look at your, your gels or whatever at home, and you'll see it very clearly. Uh, and different ones will just say they contain it or not. So it's almost a 50-50 split, but not quite. Yeah, so it used to be more like a... Um, 
33 percent 66 so like a, a third and two thirds um and this is actually what science and sport have just come out with with their beta fuel gel um so martin used the 0 0.8 to 1 and that was based on a study in 2013 i think it was where they looked at the amount they they, they tried different ratios and looked at how much you could absorb and then and then use and they came out with this 0 0.8 to 1 um and historically science and sport haven't done that ratio they've now swapped to using it. And that's what you'll see on the front of the science and sport ones. Now, are you aware of any foods that have this similar ratio that I can just buy? Uh, no, if I'm totally honest off the top of my head, uh, no. I mean, because, I, and part of it is that I would say in terms of racing, you generally want the ones which are simpler and easier. Generally, the food stuff you have will have added kind of, extras or be slightly harder to digest because in order to, to kind of make it more race friendly and simple the better it has to be designed specifically for that um and certainly when Got it, it comes, comes to other food and we're just talking about a normal diet and helping to refuel we don't want these simple sugars um in our normal diet we want healthy whole grain carbohydrates and and lots of fresh fruits and veggies you know more whole foods right of course Okay, so excellent, James. Thank you for this. I learned so much here about um, you know choosing a carb supplement, uh, understanding that ratio for racing, and really the difference between glucose and fructose, and and you know how to maximize your carb absorption per hour. So thank you very much for that. And that's the final interview done. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you found it useful. If you've got any questions or thoughts, then do let me know in the comments. If you did find this video useful, then I would really appreciate it if you gave the video a thumbs up and press subscribe if you haven't already. And do remember to press that notification icon to make sure you get an alert when I release a new video and remember that subscribing is free. Otherwise, I will catch you next time. See ya.